education dashboard to improve educational standards in Arizona legislative districts. And this is going to be delivered by Justin Collar. He's a master's student in the School of Computing and Augmented Intelligence at Arizona State University. He was a Barrett Honors student um, at Arizona State and has completed his undergraduate computer science degree. So here is Justin and uh, some of his co-authors are also on, including Dr. Michael. Justin's going to be giving the talk. Thank you for that introduction. Let me just share my screen real quick. Let me know if you can see the screen all right. You can see it. Perfect. All right, so I am Justin Collier, and today I will be presenting this paper entitled Constructing a Visualization Dashboard to Improve Educational Standards in Arizona Legislative Districts. And this is by myself, Dr. Michael, Dr. Maciejewski, and Luke Tate. To give a little introduction, education, as I'm sure is apparent, is a very important predictor of success for young children. As such, it is vital to make sure that the future generations receive the best education for them. We've seen some progress of this in the United States with legislation like the No Child Left Behind Act being recently replaced with the Every Student Succeeds Act. However, part of improving this public education is having a good system in place to be able to track and communicate these educational standards with the public which leads to states and their education dashboards. Many states, including California, New York, Florida, and many more, all maintain public education dashboards that provide accountability and public view of performance alongside some demographic information at various government levels, such as state and local district. These dashboards can be very powerful as it allows the public to remain educated on these educational standards in their state and district and allow them to hopefully make better decisions regarding pushing for higher quality education through various means like voting for budget increases. However, while this in theory is great, many of these dashboards that exist are very simplistic and visually outdated. As you can see on the right here, this is a screenshot of the Texas State Dashboard taken earlier this year. And looking at it, you might think that there would be more to it or that you might be able to interact with these bar charts in a meaningful way. But what you see here is it. It is just a screenshot that provides very limited information. Moreover, it's worth mentioning that during this research, there is a surprising lack of literature surrounding these types of education governance dashboard when it comes to their design. Moreover, to narrow in a little bit on Arizona, there is many educational problems to be tackled. In terms of public education, Arizona is consistently low ranked. For dashboards on education, most of these are limited to school specific dashboards or just don't currently exist. Although it is worth noting that there are some exceptions for private education dashboards, but these are locked down and restricted to educational district personnel. Moreover, there is a lack of centralized information regarding schools and their data. Instead, they are spread out among private and public organizations like the SAT, ACT, Department of Education, and various others. Because of all of these problems and the lack of transparency in Arizona, we propose that it is necessary to develop a legislative education dashboard for Arizona. It was chosen that the dashboard would be abstracted to the legislative district level for data and use case reasons that I will touch on a little bit later. Moving on to the overview and project requirements for this action research. This dashboard was a collaborative project with the Arizona College Access Network and the Decision Center for Educational Excellence at ASU. Since the Arizona College Access Network offered to host and maintain this dashboard after completion, they had a few specifications for it. 
specifically that it should be easily adaptable for future years. And so it was chosen that the dashboard should be developed in Tableau. They also wanted to match their brand guideline for certain aspects and to create a static visualization of this interactive dashboard called legislative district profiles. As for the design framework of the project, we decided that we would try to follow the framework outlined by Seldmer, Meyer, and Munzner in design study methodology, reflection from the trenches, and the stacks. In essence, there are nine stages that I broke down as the following. The first is the learn phase, which comprises of research. The Winnow phase, which is a comparative analysis of these existing dashboards, followed by CAST, which consists of identifying the roles of actors involved. Then we have the discover phase consisting of requirement analysis, followed by data collection and the initial design process, further followed by an implementation of the dashboard and deployment using some form of validation. And finally, the last two stages involve reflection on the contribution of the work and the write up process. As this is an iterative design process, it fits quite well within the scope of this project where changes and improvements may happen at various stages. The data used in this project came from a variety of different places, including the US Department of Education for their enrollment data, the Arizona Department of Education for their FAFSA completion data, the ACT for their menu of assessment testing data, the Decision Center for Educational Excellence for mapping files, demographic info, as well as some college readiness information. And finally, Arizona College Access Network for the school's enrollment in various education programs. And it's worth noting that although all of these data sources seem to be public and out there, a lot of times they are mismatched. Um, so they might have keys for different levels of locality. So some may be at the school level, some may be at the district level, um, and it makes putting these together quite difficult. The two main use cases for this project are the following. The first is that there is a parent who wants to access the educational dashboard to learn more about the educational standards and initiative undertaken by schools in the district. The second is that the legislator of the district wants to be able to compare their district with another to assess some of their strengths and weaknesses. From these requirements, this prototype dashboard was created where users would be able to see a heat map on the left hand side of the legislative districts by different attributes. Users can zoom in and out of this map, search their location and mouse over or click on districts to see more. Currently, it is selected as the college going rate. So that is what is being shown here. Next to the heat map is a bar chart where users can compare the districts either by selecting the two regions with the control panel on the right or by clicking on different districts on the map. They're also able to compare districts with the state average that they would like. Moreover, for the primary district selected and the educational program selected, and in this case it is on Ask Benji, which is a chat bot for FAFSA, users will be able to see which schools for that district are enrolled in that program. Moreover, there's also the static legislative district profiles that were created to highlight some of the top characteristics and meaningful comparisons, along with the list of schools and various educational programs with demographic information. The primary purpose of the legislative district profiles would be to serve as a potential hard copy handout during a luncheon with Arizona legislators, although this is yet to happen. Here is a screenshot of the top third of the Arizona's first legislative district, and it contains information on the college going rate, degree attainment, high school graduation rate, and FAFSA completion rate. And each of these are being compared with the state average. The second third contains information regarding which schools in the first legislative district are enrolled in various educational programs. 
And lastly, the bottom third highlights some demographic information regarding the top five degrees and median household income by education for the district. And this demographic information does encompass all individuals living in the district. So this is both new graduates as well as parents. Next, on to the validation of this dashboard. There are three phases used for validating. The first is testing the dashboard for colorblind usability. And this was specifically done with a program called Color Oracle, which changes the computer's color screen to mimic those with protonopia, deuteranopia, and tritonopia. The next two stages are for quantitative survey testing and qualitative client feedback. The survey validation asks participants a few encompassing questions about the clarity, ease of navigation, and interpretability, which received average scores of 1.35, 1.5, and 1.95 for being fairly clear, easy to navigate, and easy to interpret. The survey also inquired about whether the dashboard was viewed on desktop or mobile, as well as the aesthetics for the dashboard, which received a 3.95 out of 5 for being pretty aesthetic. Ultimately, however, given the scope and time frame of the project, the survey was limited to a small sample size of about 20 responses from ASU. However, the survey still had great feedback that led to many significant improvements, like clarifying some of the naming choices and default settings, to name a couple. Uh, in the future iterations, it would be best to redo the survey with a larger sample size in order to get a more accurate reading. As for the client validation, the Arizona College Access Network was very pleased with the dashboard delivered to them as they expressed that they were very impressed and that the dashboard exceeded all of their expectations. So to wrap things up, the key findings of this project were that the framework provided by Selmer, Meyer, and Munzner worked fairly well for the scope of this project. And secondarily, it was touched on a little, but there is a surprising lack of literature at the intersection of usability, dashboard, and educational governance, especially in the United States. I think with more contribution and research on state education dashboards would probably help to give a more complete perspective and potentially push for higher standards and accountability for public education in many states. And with that, I think I will conclude my presentation here and hand it back over. Great, thank you so much. I'm really enjoying how we can harness data um, in different ways to be able to inform a lot of very important processes um, in our governance, right? And how we can help people become better advocates. So I'm really excited to see that. Okay, 